Okay guys, here is the last slide with two more examples. We start with number six, which asks us to find the angle formed by the hands of a clock at 11.15. At I'm gonna start by putting the features of the clock on the clock. Okay, so let's use that formula again, if you want. It's what I'm recommending, it's the way that I'm teaching it, although I know there are other ways you could do it. Um, the child's angle. At 11.15, the four or five-year-old would probably realize that the big hand is facing the three, but that the little hand is facing the 11. Okay, so this is what we're calling the child's angle, and I might section this off so I can see exactly how many sections I'm working with. And it looks to me like I have one, two, three, four. Four sections at 30 degrees each is gonna be a child's angle of 120 degrees. Now in red, let's face the reality of the situation. At 11.15, the big hand really is facing the three. But at 11.15, the little hand really has moved on a little bit. It's not facing the 11, it's moved on a little bit. In fact, it's moved on one quarter of the way between 11 and 12 because 15 minutes is one quarter of an hour. So if we compare the green angle, the child's angle in the beginning with the red real angle, has it gotten bigger or smaller as we moved from green to red? The answer is it has gotten smaller. So it's gonna mean we're gonna subtract. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a minus sign here. Now the minutes in the formula comes from this number right here. So now I'm going to put 15 over 60 and we'll multiply that by 30. Continuing with our calculation, I'm gonna write 120 minus, 15 divided by 60 is 1 fourth. This 1 fourth reflects the fractional amount that the little hand has actually moved on. And 30 represents the section of the clock. Now 1 fourth of 30 is 30 fourths or 15 halves, or 7.5. And 120 minus 7.5 is gonna be 112.5 degrees. Okay, and for our last example, we have 250. So let's start by setting the clock up. Okay, let's establish the child's angle. The child is going to think that at 250, the big hand faces the 10, and that the little hand faces the two. And if we establish the sections now, we have one, two, three, four sections. Four sections at 30 degrees each equals a child's angle that's 120. Now let's do the reality of the situation. In reality, at 250, the big hand is facing the 10, but the little hand has moved on. It's not facing the two anymore. In fact, it's almost three o'clock, so it's almost facing the three. So that original green angle, do you think it's gotten smaller or bigger? I think it's gotten bigger, so we're gonna put a plus here. Now the minutes is 50 in this case, so we're gonna put 50 over 60, and we're gonna multiply that by 30, which is how many degrees are in one particular section. So now I'm gonna write 120 plus, 50 over 60 reduces to 5 sixths. Now the six and the 30 cross cancel, and five times five is 25. So the final answer is 145 degrees. So that's pretty much the level of difficulty that you're gonna see in our book. If you're in geometry honors, there are a few C-level questions where the times are, are a little bit weird. As a challenge for everybody, if you look at the bottom left of the screen, I put a little challenge there. And the challenge is to find the angle formed by the hands of a clock at 6.08. So if you'd like to work on that and bring your answer in tomorrow to see if you got it right, that would be great. If you don't want to do it, that's fine too. But I did want to present a little bit of a challenge to see if you could figure it out. Just as a hint, when I did the challenge problem, I didn't use the formula. I used more common sense approach. So good luck with that if you choose to do the challenge.